excited I am about being able to see your show at this year's festival. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the festival for our list uh, about the show for our listeners. For sure. Well, it's called Google Amanda Jane Dildo. Uh, so you can be sure that there's going to be some some toys of the adult variety involved. <laughs> um, basically, it's it's a cabaret. Um, musical comedy, um, and, and it's a mixture of uh, stories and songs. I take songs from the likes of Britney Spears and the Beatles and Kylie, and I corrupt them completely um, to tell um, crazy stories of things that have happened to me uh, in my life or, um, yeah, just general naughtiness uh, and silliness. Uh, and, yeah, it's just I've got two dancers who are kind of like my – um, inner demons in a way <laughs> um, and we have so much fun on stage um, so that's um, for Fee and Joshua and I've also got a wonderful guitarist in um, Mark Moran and yeah we just have an absolute blast on stage um, it's it's just ridiculously good fun and it's a show that I did in Edinburgh in 2019 and then of course COVID hit um and so this is the first time I'm doing it in front of a home audience awesome and what was that like going to Edinburgh and having such a successful show because I've spoken to other comedians who said they went across to Edinburgh and nobody knew who they were and then by the end of the festival people were stopping them in the street and congratulating them on their show What's that like going to Edinburgh and having a successful show? Uh, it is pinch yourself moment. I mean, for me, I kind of fell into doing this kind of comedy. I was I changed career um, in about 2016. I used to be in PR and events and made wine, and I always wanted to perform, but I thought I want to do plays and musical theatre. So I wrote a couple of plays, and then. I just um, was approached by a guy who runs a speakeasy venue in Melbourne to put together a little show. Um, and it just kind of, I was like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So I just, I got a guitarist and, you know, we just did something for family and friends here. And then um, I won $11,500 on the chase, which was the only reason <laughs> I could afford to go to Edinburgh. So I, I had no idea. I'd been to Edinburgh Fringe one day in my life, um, in, in fact, Edinburgh, one day in my life, and it was in my former life, and I had no idea I'd be back performing in that capacity. Um, and the first year I made every rookie error you can possibly make, but it really was just a litmus test. But that said, even though I made all the mistakes that you can possibly make, and I should actually write a blog about this for people who want to go to Edinburgh, what, what not to do, um, by the end of the show, um, yeah, this word had got around about this Aussie girl in a kilt this singing songs about dildos. And I had a bunch of um, blokes from Gla Glasgow come all dressed in their kilts <laughs> in my <laughs> last note. So, I mean, that was, for me, like, that was moderate. You know, it, it was great. It was awesome to get people to the show. But in my second year, 2019, I just went, every single mistake I made, I counted it and I did it the right way. And, um... Yeah, like, as you said, pe like, people recognising you, lining up to come and see the show. Um, I, I would get ready in the toilets, um, change into my little kilt um, before the show, and there were these two Scottish chicks talking to each other in the cubicles going, you know, I can't wait to see – I can't do the accent. Um, <laughs> you know, I've heard she's, you know, she's really – she's a howl or something. They, that's one of the – to be like a like a hoot yeah um yeah <laughs> um you know and so that was yeah it was really quite brilliant and 2020 was gearing up to be a big year for me over there because i was booking i'd booked a 300 seat um the oran moor in glasgow which is um probably the most well-known performance venue in glasgow and unfortunately we all know what happened then yeah <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> yeah came back and now, here we are. Now, I was going to ask, you mentioned uh, your prior career, and you had a very, very successful career. What was that one moment that made you decide, I'm going to put that on hold and I'm going to perform? Because I know so many young artists out there who 
Um, like I know one in particular who's a gifted young artist who's trapped working in a factory because he needs to put money on the table every night kind of thing. So what was that one moment when you decided, no, I am going to perform? Well, funnily enough, uh, it's a good story. Uh, I was actually, I'd got a, a big job uh, and I'd been in it for about two months. It was, I was the marketing, like the head of marketing for this huge global um, hospitality business. And it was really full on. Um, anyway, and then they sacked me um, for gross misconduct, which was not real. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I promise you, um, I didn't do anything wrong. Um, and I did take them to the Fair Work Commission and I won. Uh, but it was that moment that I just went, you know what, Amanda, you've, you have, you've, cl- I did climb really high in that career. And I really felt like even though I was still enjoying the work, um, I kind of just took it as a sign because I'd started writing this play and it was creatively fueling me much more than the job for the first time um, ever because I've always written for myself but this time I was like hang on I've got something here and I just went you know what bugger it I'm just going to chuck it in and I'm going to sell all my Chanel and blah de blah that I had from my former lucrative career and slowly but surely I sold almost everything (laughs) um, to keep myself afloat Um, yeah and you know I got I got through that, um, and I, I feel like, you know, I'm definitely on the other side of that. But it was – look, it really was difficult. I mean, I don't have a family to look after. You know, I don't have a mortgage. So there's a lot of reasons why I was able to do that, um, where other other people, you know, can't. Um, and I had, you know, my family support and all of that kind of stuff too. So, look, it's a big thing to, yep. to, to make that decision, but it's been the most – rewarding and awesome thing to to do i'm kind of glad i've done it the the back to front way as well yeah yeah and i wanted to talk to you about corrupting songs because one of the things that really impressed me yesterday was a parody artist that i know had a song out about the will smith chris rock slap within hours of the actual event happening and that really impressed me so when you corrupt the song how long does it take you to corrupt the song and do you know that you can corrupt the song as soon as you hear it um it's actually that is such a good question because i sometimes don't know where they come from they just pop into my head and um i think it's because since i was a little girl i've always been really um like wordy and like po- like I'm really good at rhyming um <laughs> which is just a skill um and yeah it'll be really funny I'll hear a song and it's almost like just immediately the it'll be the chorus usually and it'll be like oh I can change that oh my gosh and then I'll just whatever I'm doing I'll like usually I'm walking and I'll just turn Spotify off and I'll just focus on changing the lyrics to be that song with theme that I know it's going to be. And it generally kind of lights itself. But they they evolve. They continue to evolve and get better and longer. Like Dill Domi Do, for example, it started as just a chorus and a verse. And I always knew I'd add to it. And now it's, yeah, it's um, a couple of choruses and a couple of verses, which is great. Definitely. And now you're working with Matthew Nixon on this show as well. Tell us a little bit about Matthew and what he brings to the show as well. Yeah, Matt's awesome. So he is um, a recent graduate of a master's in theatre from uh, VCA. And um, basically, he I chose him. Um, someone at the Malthouse Theatre actually recommended like showed me the the whole list of graduates graduates and I went through them all and Matt particularly had comedy and musical theatre background and specialisation and then I looked at some of his work online he works with a production company called Runaway Balloon and I was really impressed Um, and so he was in Perth doing Perth Fringe when I approached him and um, we had a Zoom and it was just like immediate connection of like he he got the sense of humor um loved you know saw what i'd done like i showed him some youtube clips and he's like you know i really do 
I'm, I'm into this. I think it's great. Um, and I, what he's really helped me with is, A, to take my show far more seriously, yeah. <laughs> even though it's comedy, and really think about it in terms of its structure and its arc and also its message. And and it's funny, he pinpointed what the show's about before I'd actually realised that's what it was. And it, you know, pardon the pun, but it really is a, a journey of my learn recognizing self-love yeah <laughs> like not just masturbation <laughs> yeah yeah but, you know um yeah and like all of these kind of challenges i've had and in terms of especially like living with bipolar and um, pre the diagnosis and post the diagnosis um and you know that kind of crazy life which has given me all this brilliant material um you know and and look my my life is still completely you know and utterly crazy at, at, at times but i live i manage it so much better now yeah <laughs> yeah it's still very you know it still has its ups and downs i think everyone's does but mine are much more natural now rather than um, the the heady days of pre-diagnosis bipolar oh definitely as someone that suffers from anxiety i know completely about what it's like before and after that diagnosis so yeah. Um, how did being diagnosed with bipolar change your life, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I don't mind at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be doing what I do now if I wasn't diagnosed with bipolar, um, and which is, I think, really surprises everyone because, um, you know, you and me personally, the reason I went so long without accepting a diagnosis or, or allowing myself to be diagnosed, even though I knew, was because I believed that I would be medicated and that I would become a zombie, all my creativity would go, I would be zapped of energy and I was scared because that's the biggest thing about bipolar. The lows are horrific. Um those highs, even though they're dangerous, you can't see that. They are brilliant. And the last thing you want is for those to be taken away from you. Um, but it's amazing. It's like I've, I don't think I've ever been more creative or, um, but also stable, supported. Um, I learned to be honest and, and brave and, I guess, yeah, just to allow people to know what it's like and just to say I have bipolar like even just doing that took me a long time I was scared of yeah. what people would think for so long um but now like my show is essentially <laughs> about it and I'm very honest and that honesty also means that other people in your life you know can see warning signs for example and and you can talk openly and honestly with them about your challenges and how you're feeling, whereas before I'd hide it away. And there's nothing, you know, worse that you can do for yourself than just, um, you know, have it all on you. Um, sharing it is so much better. Yeah. Definitely. As well as medication. And it's I've found it's been crucial and as you know i thought medication was going to zombie me and no absolutely not it just keeps me balanced definitely well we are so looking forward to this show amanda and for our listeners out there the show runs from the 2nd to the 23rd of april on various nights all of those dates are available on the comedyfestival.com.au website and amanda i believe that two dollars from every ticket on the opening weekend is going to bipolar australia as well is that correct yeah that's correct yep today is actually uh by coincidence um world bipolar day um so i've always um all my shows have always raised money for um a charity my plays were with a lifeline and um yeah this time around i want to support um bipolar australia so that is awesome. So get along and see the show this weekend if you can. And Amanda, if there's anyone out there thinking about heading along to the show, what would you like to say to them right now? Yeah, just come and you'll have a very fun time. <laughs>